All right, good people, it is here, Logic 10.8. I can't believe it. Here we go. Let's talk about minimum requirements. So we have to say goodbye to Monterey. If you want to use Logic 10.8 and it's many a great features, you have to download Ventura 13.5 or later. It's recommended that you have at least six gigabytes of RAM. Now, just a heads up, you're going to need at least 80 gigabytes of free space for the sound library installation. So that's a whole lot of sounds. If you need to send that to an external drive, of course, you can do that. Also, just a heads up, if you're going to use Logic Remote, you might want to check to see if that device is going to be compatible. You can find out more about the tech specs on Apple's website. So I will be talking about the two new sound packs in another video. Please go to my channel to check those out. But for now, I'm going to talk about the grand unveiling of Mastering Assistant. This is really the big ticket item for this update. Mastering Assistant is a plugin that you load on the stereo output and it essentially takes care of a bunch of different mastering tasks. For example, it increases the loudness by means of compression and limiting, increases the width of the track by using the stereo spread plugin. It has a custom EQ curve that it works in to your song. And one of the cool parts is that it's actually going to adjust the loudness and the true peak of your song to basically follow current standard levels. So if you want to tweak the settings after it makes its intelligent decisions, then you can absolutely do that. You could think of this kind of like an isotope ozone that does some of the heavy lifting for you. Logic is providing the best service out there, in my opinion, when it comes to all the DAWs, and it's just making this easier and easier for people that have a hard time learning production or don't have enough time to actually invest. They can actually get their songs to sound robust, to sound full, and to sound next level. So this mastering assistant is basically going to EQ your song for you. It's going to compress it. It's going to make it loud enough so that your song can compete with anybody else in the marketplace. So that's a very tough thing to do. Mastering is definitely not an easy task as a whole. And so for them to be able to provide mastering assistant, it's really amazing. If you'd like to access this feature, you simply have to go into mix at the very top of the screen here and then select mastering assistant. You can also select it on the channel strip as well. So I want to move into sample alchemy. This is alchemy's little brother, and this is essentially just a new software instrument plugin. For those of you that have been using logic pro for iPad, you know that this was one of the features there. Well, now we get to enjoy it here in logic pro for the desktop laptop. This is a sample based instrument plugin. You can think of this kind of like quick sampler, you know, you drag in one sample and then you're off to the races. It's kind of like that. It loads a single sample and you could load that from the finder, from the loop browser, uh, from the tracks area itself. The difference between this sample alchemy and quick sampler per se is the fact that you're using different synthesis techniques. For example, additive, spectral and granular synthesis. So very much like its older brother Alchemy, you can use different sound sources to handle the waveforms. And you can also choose from different play modes as well. Here we have classic, loop, scrub, bow, and arp. So there's a bunch of great presets in here. Let me go ahead and show you some of them. Not only was Sample Alchemy one of the great features of Logic Pro for iPad, but now we have Beat Breaker. This is going to be found under the multi effects category. And Beat Breaker is just an incredible plugin that does a lot. 
It can be used to slice incoming audio and to be able to basically change up the rhythm. If you know M Rhythmizer by Melda Productions, it's kind of like that. It basically manipulates the timing, the speed, the repetition, and the volume of all of these different audio slices. Again, has a bunch of different presets. Let me play you a couple now. Something I'm particularly excited about is the new default region type. I'm not going to get into the X's and O's about this, but the fact that there's clarity now among what a software instrument track type is and a region type in Logic Pro, this just makes for such a great workflow. For example, I can use a pattern region format inside of a software instrument. I can use a drummer format inside of a MIDI track, the dance floor has basically opened up and you can do a whole lot more with software instruments in Logic Pro. So go ahead and check that out. Really great feature. So because they've simplified the default region types, there's a lot that's going to change with drummer tracks. Now what's important here is that we can add pattern regions, MIDI regions into the drummer track. The best part of course is that we can take each one of these drummer regions and we can set each one to a different drummer playing through the same software instrument. If you don't want that software instrument to change, you are going to want to hit this lock icon here inside of the library. And then basically when you switch drummers, the instrument is not going to change. One new addition as well. In the past, you couldn't record MIDI on drummer and now you can. Just set up the track as usual, hit record, and start playing. There's a new feature for all you samplers out there that love to take loops, third-party samples, songs. Now we can map evenly across trigger note range. So when you convert regions to a new sampler track, you're going to want to go ahead and enable this checkbox and it's basically going to take those individual samples, chop them up and spread them evenly across the note range. I think the dark horse with this release is the addition of the slip and rotate tools. These were added as commands inside of the last couple of versions of Logic Pro, but now we can actually use them as tools. So this is definitely going to up my game because I found myself not really using slip and rotate mostly because I would just forget the key commands and you know there's a billion other things to remember but having them front and center like this I really think it's going to change my workflow. So the slip tool is basically just going to move MIDI audio regions to the left or right depending on the content underneath. The rotate tool on the other hand is literally going to rotate whatever's on the leftmost position of the region is going to kind of move over to the right and vice versa. So we have a lot of versatility here. Super excited about it. Let me show you an example. All right, for all of my organized people out there, the fact that software instruments will now be colored in green is mega. MIDI effects were always green. I always thought that was a nice gesture, but now software instruments are also going to be colored green. And so hence we have this differentiation between audio effects, software instruments, and MIDI effects. Gotta love it. The pitch correction plugin now looks absolutely incredible. 
I did not like using the last one because it looked like it was from 1987, but this one right here definitely looks the part. You've got a lot of the same features, but one particular feature you might have slept on is the neural pitch detection. So now this pitch correction plugin is definitely more formidable. I highly recommend you use it. I think you're going to love it. All right, so the last thing I'll talk about here is the fact that they removed toggle solo mode. This used to be control S and it used to confuse a lot of beginners. And so I'm super grateful that a bunch of people are not going to get lost in this now. So they are letting users obviously assign their own custom key commands. I just like that they're not set there by default, right? We want to give newbies the confidence and experience to be able to move forward. And then we want to give complete flexibility and creative liberty to those who have been using the program. So I think this is a happy medium. Oh, and just a heads up, clear recall solo has now been changed. The key command used to be control option command S, and this would clear or bring back up your solo states. Now the key command is option S. You can change that in the key command window. All right, well, that is it for now. 10.8 is in the books. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Go ahead and check out my other video where I will be dropping the sound packs, hybrid textures, and Vox Melodics.